Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode in our WCW What If series. It is time for the Great American Bash 1996 and it is going to be a big one for sure. We've got the World Heavyweight Championship on the line as Sting defends against Bam Bam Bigelow, the winner of World War III. We have the United States Championship on the line in the rematch. Eddie Guerrero, this time challenging for the championship against the champion Brian Pillman. We have Cactus Jack versus Randy Savage happening tonight. And of course we have one that might be the biggest match on the card. Steve Austin going one-on-one with Paul Levesque after everything that has happened uh, over the last few weeks between those two. But we're not going to run down a billion things right now because we will run it down before the matches happen. We're going to jive we're going to jump that is right into the action with a dark match happening before the show featuring Marcus Bagwell defeating Sean Stasiak in 547 by pinfall of the Yellow Jacket Suplex 56 rating. Just wanted to get both of them get both of them booked here tonight in what is clearly TW2020 by SE and not realistic to the times. Um We are running the Louisiana Superdome here tonight in front of 63,815 people. (laughs) That is definitely, definitely inaccurate for any WCW pay-per-view at the time. And uh, truth be told, that is inaccurate for pretty much any show nowadays. Um, Outside of maybe WrestleMania and Wrestle Kingdom, I don't think a regular uh, pay-per-view is getting that many people by, you know, at the show, but we uh, we do what we do here in, w- in TW2020. Nevertheless, we move on from this dark match to the opening video, uh, recapping a couple of the major stories happening in WCW right now. Um, we see highlights of the story happening between Sting and Bam Bam Bigelow, uh, Eddie Guerrero and Brian Pillman, Paul Levesque and Steve Austin, and of course more. Um, kind of further highlighting everything about to happen here tonight. And, uh, yeah, we got to get into the action. We start things off with an opening contest. That gets a 77 rating as Lex Luger gets a victory over Vader in 1439 when Vader caused Lex Luger to submit. Um, He passed out in a bear hug. Only for the referee that was laid out um, the previous, there was a referee uh, bump. Second referee came in, called for the submission victory for Vader. Only for the previous unconscious referee to recover and reverse the decision because Vader had been disqualified for hitting him to begin with. That's right, we opened up Great American Bash with a dusty finish. Um... (laughs) I have a reasoning for it, <laughs> um, but in about that fantastic eating great wrestling, Lex Luger does get the victory in 1439, 77 rating for the matchup. Match suffered because of a lack of selling, but it still was a hot opener as Luger gets the victory. Um, truth be told, Vader was supposed to win this one, and Luger basically refused to put him over unless I gave, like, unless I protected Luger and kept him strong and made it a tainted victory and all that stuff and I was like I'm not dealing with all that so Luger's gonna get the um dusty finish victory here um yeah there's that and that's what Luger gets for going to, to business for himself he uh he gets a dusty finish victory here at the great American bash <laughs> just put down Lex Luger right away here um nevertheless gets a 77 as Luger gets the victory Afterwards, we go to a commotion backstage that's happening with security officials running in to try to break things up. On one side, being held back by the security is the Giant, and on the other side is Rikishi Fatu. Of course, these two men were supposed to have some sort of potential confrontation here at the pay-per-view, and apparently they're having it right now. Uh, Fatu has the steel chair he had with him on Nitro to uh, even up the odds against the Giant. Um, there's some security guards that are laid out uh, on the ground as it's clear that these two have been trying to get at each other for a little bit and have been taking out guards in the process. 
Piper then comes into view and yells at both of them to stop this fighting. He says that uh, he's had enough. He thought that his statement on Monday was enough, but apparently it's not. He's done with this. He's tired of this happening. He's tired of these two continuously doing this at this point. He says that if they want a piece of each other so badly, they can wait for tomorrow night and fight in the ring one-on-one. Giant roars about destroying Fatu, and Fatu says that he'll make Giant pay. So, it is official. We're going to have... Um, I don't think I have anything. Okay, good. Uh, it is official. That's... Okay. I forgot that I had that stuff pre-booked. Um, I'll get that. I'll get it uh, set. But it is official that it will be Rikishi Fatu and the Giant going at it. Um, I just really, yeah, I realized that that kind of spoiled a little bit of stuff there. So, but anyway, um, Rikishi Fatu and the Giant will be going one on one on Nitro tomorrow night. Gets an eighty one rating for the segment. After that, we move on to a tag team matchup. Which gets a 68 rating. Not too bad. Um, kind of expected better, but I'll take it. As the Blue Bloods defeat the Rock and Roll Express in 951 when Regal gets Ricky Morton to submit to a Regal stretch. Uh, good back and forth matchup, but at the end of the day, Regal was just too good and gets the victory for his team. 68 rating, uh, 90 for Lord Steven Regal. My God, I probably need to get him out of the uh, tag team division onto a singles run because... If he's pulling off 90 in-ring performances, that's insane. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Nevertheless, 63 from Ian, 63 from Gibson, 55 from Morton. Um, good rating, or uh, very good and great ratings for the legend gimmicks that the Rock and Roll Express are running now. Morton seemed off his game, so he probably would have had upper 50s, lower 60s if he was on his game. But Rock and Roll Express making their re-debut in WCW after many years, but the Blue Bloods were too much for them and uh, got the victory there. So, kind of an interesting thing. As um, I didn't really reveal <laughs> until this match happened. Um, kind of forgot to uh, to set up this. To be fair, I put way too much stuff into this pay-per-view, as it is. Um, and uh, health-wise, I'm not doing the greatest but nevertheless um obviously the segment the uh the story heading into this was that the blue bloods were going to have a match against an unknown team that they've never faced before well it ended up being the rock and roll express and uh blue bloods get the victory so there's that after that match we go backstage to a gene okerlin who's standing by with medusa stating that she's the best female wrestler in the business today and she's going to be put to the test against Nakano tonight, but she will emerge victorious. Just a basic little um, segment to hype up the medusa Bull Nakano match about to happen. Gets 60 rating. Pretty pretty good promo there. The match itself gets 54. Not bad. Not too bad at all. As in a decent matchup, Bull Nakano actually gets the victory in six and a half minutes by pinfall to guillotine leg drop. Defeating Medusa... Medusa's first loss in WCW, uh, thanks to Aja Kong getting involved and distracting Medusa. 54 rating for the match, which is really good, uh, all things considered. 54 for Medusa, 51 for Bolnikano. And uh, there you go, Bolnikano getting a victory th- over Medusa here on here at the Bash. After that, we get a quick video hyping up the match between Randy Savage and Cactus Jack. Kind of shows Randy Savage's recent... Um, attacks on his opponents after the bell um kind of shows him having some issues with keeping his anger under control recently uh shows the segment or shows a uh, cactus confronting him originally and then the brawl that happened uh this past monday night on nitro kind of leads into this matchup that gets a 79 rating good stuff Probably would have been better if it was a little, if it was longer, but you know what? I will take it. Um, in fact, I want to check that really quick just to make sure. Um, lack of heat too. Lack of heat and uh, yeah, it was really just a lack of heat for the storyline. That really hurt it more than anything. Nevertheless, in an exceptional matchup, 79 rating, Cactus Jack defeats Randy Savage in 1248. When Savage got disqualified after going into an attacking rage. Uh, during the matchup, Alex Wright did come down and provide a little bit of a distraction on Randy Savage. It wasn't the ending, 
but it was kind of like partway through the match. Savage looked like he was kind of in some control, and Alex Wright came down to provide a little bit of a distraction, trying to get, um, you know, the fact that uh, that he was being down by Randy Savage before. Um, so kind of uh, provided a little bit of a distraction, but it wasn't, you know, didn't lead to the end of the match. It, the end of the match came where Randy Savage was just, just wouldn't let up. He uh, got pissed off. Cactus Jack was able to avoid a couple of top rope elbows. Savage lost it, started going into a rage, wouldn't break up a hold, or wouldn't uh, back off back off of Cactus Jack when he was in the corner, and the referee called for this qualification. So Cactus Jack wins, 88 from Jack, 94 from Savage. Very good match here. Afterwards, Alex Wright gets in the ring to try to pull Randy Savage off of Cactus Jack. Uh, Randy Savage fights Alex Wright off, but if it's, an, it's enough of a distraction for Cactus to get to his feet and fight Savage enough to send him reeling out of the ring. Savage is absolutely livid as Cactus squares up for a fight, but uh, Savage decides to just turn and leave. Cactus thanks Alex Wright for his help and then celebrates the victory. So, nice little uh, way for the good guys, so to speak, to look good as Savage clearly not going to take this sitting down. Gotta imagine that he's not going to be done with Cactus or Alex Wright anytime soon. After that, we go to something. The button doesn't want to click. We go to our strap match featuring Dustin Rhodes defeating Big Bro Rogers in a strap match in 934 when Dustin Rhodes was the first to touch all the corners. 68 rating for the match. Uh, despite the fact that they did not click with each other, they were still able to pull off a 68, which is not too bad. I will take it. Um, kind of putting it into the storyline now since, of course, as you see there, they don't click. So it would be kind of dumb to keep keep it going beyond this. But um, And to be fair, the strap match was going to be the blow-off for the, for the feud anyway. Nevertheless, Dustin Rhodes with a 63, Big Bubba Rogers with a 50, and Dustin Rhodes able to get some revenge after what Rogers did to his dad, able to whip him with the strap a few times and get the big victory. We'll have to see what's next for Dustin Rhodes heading forward, and what's next for Big Bubba Rogers, I suppose, too. <clears throat> after that, we get a quick little backstage promo. Uh, where James Mitchell apparently struggled when going off script and looked lost out there, which is kind of weird, but whatever. Uh, Gene Oakland is standing by with James Mitchell and Meng. Meng or Mitchell talks about how no one so far has been able to truly stop Meng, and that will continue week after week. Uh, Meng doesn't care about the horsemen or any other group of groups of people in this company, um, kind of referring to Paul of X group and, and everybody else. He only cares about himself, and that Mitchell says that Meng will be waiting tomorrow night for his next victim. So we kind of get it confirmed that it's, we're going to get another TV title matchup on Nitro tomorrow night. After that, we go back to the ring where Jesse James Armstrong gets a victory over VK Wall Street in 10.09 by pinfall with a shake, rattle, roll. Uh, 53 rating for the match. Uh, ended the storyline here because I have other plans for everybody involved. Uh, Jesse James Armstrong was really off his game, which really sucks. He only had a 44 in ring performance. Wall Street of the 51. This was planned to bring the fans back down a little bit because we've got uh, some a little bit of a roller coaster going on, and I wanted to make sure we had a couple of cooldown matches throughout the show. Nevertheless, Jesse James Armstrong getting the victory and winning the feud, so to speak. We'll have to see where both men head from here. After that, we get a video package hyping up the history between Eddie Guerrero and Brian Pillman about... Brian Pillman winning the United States Championship last month at Slamboree. Uh, everything that's been happening recently, including Dean Malenko getting involved to try to help out, even out the odds. We go to the match itself, which gets a 87 rating. Holy cow. This got the match. <laughs> this match got the crowd buzzing. My God, an exceptional matchup. Brian Pillman defeats Eddie Guerrero in 1909 by pinfall with an air Pillman. 92 from Eddie, 91 from Pillman. Holy crap! This might and this could but has the strong potential to be the hottest uh, match or the best match of the night. Um, I know there's a couple of ma matches later on that has really great stories, but with the in-ring competitors that are involved, it might not be as good of a rating as this one was. So this one may have stolen the show. Nevertheless, 
Pillman makes defense number two of the United States Championship because, as you see there on the screen, during the matchup, Diamond Dallas Page ran in and attacked Eddie Guerrero. Uh, Malenko was again distracted with Flair and Benoit on the outside, and Pill and Page came in and dist- and uh, laid Eddie Guerrero out with a diamond cutter. Pillman able to connect with Air Pillman after that and get the victory in 1909. Huge, huge, huge match here. Good stuff across the board. Afterwards, the crowd rains down with the booze as Diamond Dallas Page mocks Eddie Guerrero, who's laid out on the canvas, before the horsemen jump Guerrero and Malenko on the attack, three on two beat down in the ring. Ron Simmons then comes running out from the back, uh, and Page kind of backs up a little bit, but the horsemen are join in with him and end up beating down Ron Simmons as well. So Guerrero, Malenko, and Simmons are laid out on the canvas as Flair raises the hand of Brian Pillman and Diamond Dallas Page in celebration. The commentators then wonder what this means as the show goes elsewhere. So we don't know what that means, but Page was celebrating with the horsemen to end the show, or to end the match, that, or you know, to end this whole bit, I guess. So no idea what that means heading forward, but um, we're going to have to see. We're going to have to see on Nitro tomorrow night, see why Paige was helping out the Horsemen. After that, we have our matchup featuring Barry Windham defeating Paul Orndorff in 1522 by pinfall of the Flying Lariat. That's right. For some reason, that match won 1522. <laughs> um, 64 rating for the matchup as these two um, names from the past, I guess, so to speak, were able to go and put on a... a Pretty decent matchup. Not a great matchup, but it was a pretty decent matchup. Window with a 67, Orndor for the 54. Um, match brought the crowd back down a little bit after that buzzing that they were at with the U.S. title thing. I didn't want to completely burn them out before the main event, so that's why we brought them back down after the U.S. title matchup. Nevertheless, 64 rating. This is going to put an end to the storyline with the Windhams and Simply Wonderful, simply because I have other things for uh, both teams involved after that we get a 76 rated video package highlighting all the history between Paul Levesque and Steve Austin you guys already know what has been happening for weeks now Austin was kidnapped um, the last couple of weeks and confronted about everything the former Mr. JL revealed that he is with this group of invaders now uh, revealing himself to be the one who let them in, so to speak. Uh, everything that's been happening has all been building up to this 76 rating for this video package. The match itself between Paul Levesque and Steve Austin gets a 81 rating. My God, that's a good rating. That's a lot better than I expected. In an exceptional matchup, Paul Levesque defeats Steve Austin in 11:29. By pinfall with a pedigree following interference from unknown figure number two who revealed himself to be Sean Waltman. Sean Waltman, the former 123 kid from WWF, or sorry, from the company up north. They don't actually mention the name of the company on there. Nevertheless, the former 123 kid has come to. WCW as well to join Paul Levesque and his group. Well, to be fair, he's been here this whole time, but this is the first time we're actually getting to see who it is. So that's huge. Sean Waltman, while not a a big name at this point in time, is pretty significant enough that the crowd actually, you know, is audibly gasping for the fact that Sean Waltman is uh, one of the mysterious figures of this force. 81 rating, 94 from Austin, 66 from Levesque. This is why I had, this is why I wasn't sure about the match rating for this because Paul Levesque is not too popular right now. Um, he's there, but he's, you got to remember this is this is Paul Levesque. This is early, early Hunter Hearst Holmesley Paul Levesque. So this is, you know, he's like 50s, 60s for popularity. Um, so I've got to, you know, if I'm going to sell him, I've got to keep building him up. 
and getting a victory over the man who was just challenging for the world title last month at Slamboree is obviously a good way to get some po- some uh, popularity there. Nevertheless, 81 rating for this matchup as Paul Levesque is able to get the victory thanks to Sean Waltman. After the match, Waltman or Austin goes after Waltman, but the odds are against him. He gets beaten down by the four men that are in the ring, including Sean Waltman now. Um, it does get revealed. You see his name on the screen now, especially because I wrote it in there as well, that he's being down by Waltman, Levesque, Lynn, and this mystery fourth person. Uh, they did reveal that his name is Jerry Lynn on WCW Saturday Night. Um, I probably should have brought that up in the the uh, video package heading into this, but yeah, they did reveal, he did kind of officially get revealed that his name is Jerry Lynn. So nevertheless, this group now known, known now as the new world order stands tall over the laid out body of Steve Austin. After that, you know, as the crowd is booing the recently returning road warriors and Dr. Death, Steve Williams himself comes running out from the back to try to chase off the new world order. Um, Williams checks on Austin as the Road Warriors stare down the NWO, kind of pre- preventing them from getting back in the ring or doing any more damage. Uh, the NWO make their way towards the stage, celebrating the victory and the commentator, leaving the commentator speechless as they celebrate. 71 rating here. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it's not... It, I just want to clarify really quick that the Road Warriors and Steve Williams, while part-time might be going after the NWO over. It's not more of a permanent thing. I'm already starting to, to slowly build a team in the background to go up against or to force to go up against the NWO. But um, this was more of, you know, these guys didn't have anything that they were doing on the show. Not that it was a, I needed to book them kind of thing. It was more of these guys didn't have anything going on the show. So they were already kind of hanging out backstage and they decided to come running out to make the save uh, when this attack happened. Um, that kind of thing. Everybody else that, normally would have been getting involved with still would have uh, been either, you know, too busy with whatever they were doing in the night. So that's kind of what happened here. Um, and of course the only other person who really would be going after the NWO right now would be Johnny B. Bad, who's still on the shelf after being obliterated, um, being down, left a bloody mess a few weeks back by this group. We still have not seen Johnny B. Bad since that whole thing happened. But the NWO not only getting the victory here tonight, but also standing tall uh, at the end of the whole thing. So making a statement for sure here at the Great American Bash. After that, we try to move on and do try to do successfully move on to our World Heavyweight Championship match. The video package plays. Hyping up Bam Bam Bigelow versus Sting hypes up the fact that Bam Bam Bigelow won the World War Three uh, battle bowl scenario thing. It, they, he won World War Three um, and got to have that title shot at his choosing. Highlights him and St- him and Vader winning the tag team titles and how dominant they have been over the last six months. Highlights Sting winning the championship at Starcade and being a dominant champion for the last six months, defeating any and all challengers who have come his way hypes up the fact that these are two dominant men getting ready to square off one-on-one. That's kind of what I figured. Although I'm a little surprised. I'm admittedly a little surprised. Kind of figured this would have been better, but whatever. Nevertheless, a little bit to go over here. Bam Bam Bigelow with an 82, ring ring performance, Sting with an 84. During the matchup, Booker T came out and provided a distraction for the world's heavyweight champion, Sting. Lex Luger then came running down. Of course, at this point, Vader and Percy Pringle were just kind of standing by watching this happen. Um, Lex Luger, well... Vader came out partway through the matchup, but Vader and Pringle were just uh, up at the top of the stage. Um, Lex Luger then comes out at this point. He he told Sting on this past Saturday night that he wasn't going to come out unless he needed to. 
but this time he comes out because he feels like he needs to because of the fact that Booker T came down and provided a distraction. Uh, Luger goes to swing or goes to uh, kind of push Booker, um, kind of confronts him. Well, to be fair, Booker's up on the apron. Luger gets up on the apron, kind of confronts Booker, asks him what the hell he's doing there. Um, Sting is trying to figure out, you know, trying to ignore these two. Uh, goes after Bigelow and, uh, you know, kind of slam, hits a big body slam on Bigelow. Crowd's going crazy for that. Uh, Luger and Booker are still arguing on the apron when um, Booker pushes Luger. Luger then charges at Booker, but it just happens to be when Sting was kind of nearby, the two men trying to get them to to keep from fighting with each other. And uh, Luger ends up clocking Sting instead of Booker T with the um, with the big forearm that he was aiming for Booker with. Sting gets dazed, gets caught in a submission, gets caught in the big bear hug by Bam Bam Bigelow. Luger tries to get in the ring to stop things, but this is when Vader has made his way down to the ring and Vader grabs Luger's foot, drags him back out of the ring, and eventually Sting passes out to the pain of the bear hug leading to a new WCW World's Heavyweight Champion in Bam Bam Bigelow. That's right. In this world, Bam Bam Bigelow has become a a, uh, World's Heavyweight Champion. 74 rating for the matchup. Not as good of a rating as I was hoping for, but it is what it is. 82 from Bigelow, 84 from Sting. So there you go. After the match, Bigelow begins celebrating with Vader and Pringle, who joins him in the ring. Sting looks confused by what just happened with Luger, but Luger admits it was all an accident, saying he was going after Booker. Sting then turns his attention to Booker, and Booker, uh, the camera is close enough to these three men to hear Booker saying that that was payback for this past Monday night, of course. Luger cost the Har- Harlem Heat the tag team titles this past Monday night. So Booker said that that was payback for that. But he didn't mean for Sting to actually lose the the world title. He just said he was out here to provide a distraction. And that Luger was the one who cost Sting the championship. So Luger and Bigelow, or Luger and Booker kind of having a little bit of an argument with each other. As uh, Sting, obviously very frustrated about this happening. Bam Bam Bigelow celebrates with the WCW World's Heavyweight Championship as the crowd continues booing with the pay-per-view coming to an end, to an 82 rating for the segment. The show itself, in front of 63,815 people in the Louisiana Superdome, is rated with a 77. Not a strong rating. Lost popularity in one region, which I'm guessing is the Southeast. But we did say it'll gain popularity everywhere else. Um, or at least in 25 regions. Feels like the rest of the U.S. we didn't gain any popularity at all. And not a strong sh- not a strong showing there. Um, that main event was hoping for more out of. My problem was I took a chance on it. Um, I took a chance on the main event. And... Uh, Tried to put the, tried to put it as a fifteen plus minute matchup uh, with a slow build because Bigelow and Va- or Bigelow and Sting both have great enough per, uh, psychology that it should have worked, but unfortunately, I kind of didn't really think about the fact that even with the slow build, uh, the slow build road agent note that Bigelow would still be penalized for stamina because of it. Not only that, but uh, but the pay-per-view or the uh the storyline itself was not strong at all i mean it was strong but it wasn't that strong so nevertheless great american bash still turned out to be pretty good i will still take it um could have been better but i will take it i got a 7.77 pay-per-view buy rate uh just a little bit under four thousand four million viewer buys there as well as a TV rating because it is on TV. It's on Sky Perfect TV. Um, I don't know why that's a thing. I think that was already set up 
Otherwise, I would have that on pay-per-view. But nevertheless, a uh, pretty decent showing regardless. So technically, overall, it still it had 4.1 million viewers. I'll take it. I will take that for sure. Um, Rating-wise, I don't think... Yeah, there wasn't really anything else to go up against on the night. But we are still the fourth most watched show. Or the fourth most watched uh, show, event, whatever you want to call it, of the night. Only Star Trek Voyager, Married with Children, and the Nanny was better than our was better than our pay per view, or at least more most more watched than it. So, I'll take that, I guess. Um, but yeah, I was kind of hoping for better. Didn't quite get better, unfortunately. Um, Go and kind of compare this to uh, stuff here. So if we go to look, it is nowhere in that top part. We have to go all the way down to 44th to get to the pay-per-view rating-wise. Match-wise, um, best match was Brian Pillman in defeating a Guerrero. That's number 11 on there. So not, not fantastic, but I'll still take it. I'll still take that. Uh, Attendance-wise, though, it was, our, <laughs> it was our most attended show ever. Um, so there's that, I suppose, probably because the uncensored Slambury and Super Bowl, uh, shows were running arenas that had, uh, a certain limit to it. Um, and then pay-per-view buy rates, it was the highest rated pay-per-view buy rate. So, I mean, our pay-per-view buy rates are continuing to go up as you see there. Um, Slambury had a 7.27, this had a 7.77. So it's continuing to go up. It's just, uh, everything else is kind of a little, a little iffy there. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we're still kind of here popularity wise. Um, Southeast, as you saw, took a little bit of a hit there. I think I didn't realize that everything else was 71 at this point. I thought it was higher for some reason. Um, I didn't realize everything else is 71 in the USA. So we might've actually increased popularity with that, with that show everywhere else. Uh, we just didn't increase popularity in the Southeast, which is fine. We just want to make sure we keep that above 77 or at least 77 or higher because if we keep that up at 77 or higher and then we can get four other areas up to 77 then we'll get to big size and that'll be that'll be a whole thing in itself because then that'll be I'll be completely honest um I've already kind of have it set in in motion over that when we get to big size that's when I'm going to introduce WCW Thunder um and Saturday night will definitely become a major b show at that point like it'll be more of like a c show at that point uh but thunder will actually probably be covered more um i know saturday night i don't really cover too much right now that's because i've kind of especially the last couple weeks i've kind of gone to mostly auto booking except for a few segments i wanted to put on it um just because i i don't really have a lot of plans for saturday night right now i mean i have i have some plans but i haven't really been doing a lot with them recently um but when thunder becomes a thing it'll definitely be not quite an A show level, but it'll be like a a higher intrigued B show. It'll be kind of be like it was in real life, where it was like it was a B show, but it still had like a lot of mega stars on it, kind of thing. So, and we'll be kind of able to look at that um, on that night. So, there is that. I believe we can't compare our, our show to um, WWF's pay per view yet because I think King of the Ring for them happens. Yeah, King of the Ring happens for them next Sunday. So we will have to wait on that. But as you saw, a lot of crazy stuff to happen out of the Great American Bash. We have a new WCW World's Heavyweight Champion in Bam Bam Bigelow, who is now a double champion. He is one half of the Tag Team Champions and the World's Heavyweight Champion now. We saw Paul Levesque get the victory thanks to one of the mystery figures revealing himself as none other than Sean Waltman and a whole lot more happened on this show. So while it wasn't a amazing rated show, it was still a very significant rated show for sure. But that is going to do it for us tonight. Thank you for watching. Definitely appreciate it. And we will catch you guys tomorrow night for the fallout show of Monday Nitro.